Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, where I share with you the amazing secrets of nature and how they can benefit our health and well-being. My name is Pat, and my husband and I own Warner's Tree Surgery, where we have been treating sick trees for over 50 years. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how herbs fight disease and how trees have immune system. You may have heard that herbs are good for your health, but do you know why? Well, it turns out that herbs have some powerful weapons against pathogens, such as fungi, bacteria, and viruses. These weapons are called enzymes, and they are molecules that speed up chemical reactions in the cells. Enzymes can break down the cell walls and membranes of the pathogens, and destroy their DNA and RNA, thus killing them or stopping them from multiplying. But where do these enzymes come from? Well, they are produced by every cell of every plant, as part of their defense mechanism. Plants are constantly exposed to various threats from the environment, such as insects, animals, and diseases. To protect themselves, plants have developed a sophisticated immune system, similar to ours, but with some differences. Unlike animals, plants don't have a circulatory system that can transport immune cells and molecules throughout the body. Instead, plants rely on local and systemic responses to fight off invaders. Local responses are triggered when a plant cell detects a pathogen and sends a signal to the neighboring cells to activate their defenses. These defenses include producing enzymes, as well as other compounds that can inhibit the growth or reproduction of the pathogen, or attract beneficial insects that can eat the pathogen. Systemic responses are triggered when a plant cell sends a signal to the whole plant to alert it of the danger and prepare it for further attacks. These responses include producing hormones that can regulate the growth and development of the plant, as well as the expression of genes that can enhance the resistance of the plant to the pathogen. One of the most important hormones that plants produce in response to pathogens is salicylic acid, which you may know as the main ingredient of aspirin. Salicylic acid can induce a state of immunity in plants, called systemic acquired resistance, or SAR. SAR can increase the production of enzymes and other compounds that can fight off a wide range of pathogens, and it can last for several days or weeks. Salicylic acid can also act as a signal molecule that can communicate with other plants nearby, and warn them of the presence of pathogens. This is called plant-plant communication, and it can help plants to coordinate their defenses and increase their chances of survival. So, as you can see, plants have a remarkable ability to fight disease and protect themselves from harm. And when we use herbs for our health, we are actually borrowing some of their immune power and enhancing our own. Herbs can provide us with enzymes and other compounds that can boost our immune system, reduce inflammation, and prevent or treat infections. Some of the herbs that are known for their antifungal, antibacterial, and antiviral properties are garlic, ginger, turmeric, oregano, thyme, rosemary, sage, echinacea, elderberry, and many more. You can use these herbs as spices, teas, tinctures, oils, or capsules, and enjoy their benefits and flavors. But remember, herbs are not magic bullets, and they are not substitutes for a healthy lifestyle. You should always consult your doctor before using any herbs, especially if you have a medical condition or take any medication. You should also use herbs with caution and moderation, and follow the recommended dosage and instructions. Too much of anything can be harmful, and herbs are no exception. Now, you may be wondering, what do plants need to make these enzymes? And what micronutrients need to be in the soil in order for them to produce these enzymes? Well, let me tell you. Plants need several elements and compounds to make enzymes and other molecules that are essential for their growth and survival. These include carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, iron, zinc, copper, manganese, molybdenum, boron, chlorine, nickel, cobalt, and silicon. Some of these elements are called macronutrients, because plants need them in large amounts, and some are called micronutrients, because plants need them in small amounts. But they are all important, and plants cannot live without them. Plants get most of these elements and compounds from the soil, through their roots. The soil is a complex mixture of minerals, organic matter, water, air, and living organisms. The mineral content of the soil depends on the type of rock and sediment that forms the soil, and the weathering processes that break them down. The organic matter in the soil comes from the decomposition of plants and animals, and the activity of microorganisms. The water in the soil dissolves and transports the nutrients to the roots, where they are absorbed by the plant cells. 
However, not all soils are equally rich in nutrients, and some may lack certain elements or compounds that plants need. This can affect the health and growth of plants, and make them more vulnerable to diseases and pests. To prevent this, farmers and gardeners often add fertilizers to the soil, which are substances that contain the essential nutrients for plants. Fertilizers can be organic, such as compost or manure, or inorganic, such as chemical salts or minerals. Fertilizers can improve the quality and quantity of the crops, but they also have some drawbacks, such as pollution, runoff, and soil degradation. Therefore, it is important to use fertilizers wisely and responsibly, and to follow the instructions and recommendations of the manufacturers and experts. You should also test your soil regularly, and adjust the amount and type of fertilizer according to the needs of your plants and the condition of your soil. You should also use other methods to improve your soil health, such as crop rotation, cover crops, mulching, and composting. By doing this, you can ensure that your plants have enough nutrients to make the enzymes and other compounds that they need to fight disease and stay healthy. And you can also enjoy the fruits of your labor, literally and figuratively. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.